Hello, today we're going to be talking about vectors. So a vector uh, is a quantity that has both a magnitude and a direction. Uh, so <clears throat> these are usually represented with an arrow in diagrams, uh, like this over here would be a 600 newton force, uh, and the direction is shown by the arrow itself. Um, <clears throat> and when we're working with vectors, it's important to take into consideration both the magnitude and the direction within our equations. We can't just add things up uh, and treat them like scalar quantities, which is a, uh, a quantity that has a, ma a uh, magnitude but no direction. An example of a scalar quantity would be something like mass. Uh, it's got you know 600 kilograms of mass. There's no set direction to that particular mass. Uh, examples of vectors, though, uh, these are going to include things like forces. So I had a 600 newton force right here. Uh, and it's in addition to having a magnitude, it's also going to have a direction. I'm pushing it in some direction. Uh, in this case, I'm pushing it kind of over this way and a little bit up. Other examples of vector quantities include velocities uh, and accelerations. These are the three kind of most common vector quantities that we're going to experience in mechanics courses. So vector representation, um, how do we quantify all of this? Uh, we're going to usually use one of two different forms to represent a vector. Uh, the first one is the magnitude and direction. Uh, so an example of this, I've got my XY coordinate system, and I've got some man pushing on a box. He's exerting 70 pounds of force on this box. And he's exerting that at an angle 15 degrees up from horizontal. So a magnitude, 70 pounds, and a direction uh, is given by this angle. Next, we've got a magnitude in each of the coordinate axes. So our coordinate axes are x and y in this case. Um, and I could say, instead of this original diagram, I could say that the man is exerting negative 67.6 pounds in the x direction, so he's going opposite of the x-axis. Uh, and he's exerting 18.1 pounds in the y direction. So these two vectors, they're actually the same, the same vector, but they're two different represent representations of that vector. All right, so when we're converting between forms, we're going to use right triangles uh, and basic trigonometry to go back and forth between those two forms. Uh, so in 2D, uh, let's say we're going to start with a magnitude and direction. And we can want to convert that over to the, the uh, components. Uh, the way I would do that is I would draw in a right triangle. So the hypotenuse of this right triangle is going to be the magnitude, uh, that, that force vector I have. Uh, it's 35 degrees up from horizontal, and the two legs of my right triangle, the x leg would be uh, in the direction of the x-axis, and the y leg is in the direction of the y-axis. So this right here is going to be a right angle there. So with a right triangle, I can use sine and cosine to find the length of the legs, because if the total magnitude is the length of the hypotenuse, the length of this leg over here is going to be the y component of my vector. And this length of this leg down here in the x direction is going to be the length or the magnitude of my x component of the vector. Uh, so opposite leg uh, is going to be the magnitude, so this hypotenuse times sine theta. And that will give me my y, uh, y component of my vector. And if I do the uh, cosine, that is the adjacent side over here. Uh, that's going to give me my x component of the vector. Um, so it's important, though, to keep track of what is the opposite leg and what is the adjacent leg. Talk more about that later. So converting back between these two, uh, if I started with the components, so I've got 300 newtons in the x direction, 200 in the y direction, uh, I'm going to draw in my original vector. It's going to be the hypotenuse in this case. Uh, so to find the hypotenuse, I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, the x component squared plus the y component squared, take the square root of that whole thing, and that will give me the length of the hypotenuse, which is the magnitude of my vector. To find the direction, I'm going to use the arctan function or the inverse tangent function. So the tangent is the opposite side over the adjacent side, it's that ratio. Uh, so the inverse tangent, if I know the ratio of opposite side over adjacent side, if I do the inverse tangent of that, I can find the angle. 
and that inverse tangent function will give me this angle theta. Um, you can set it up, usually in your calculator, it can give you it either in degrees or radians. Uh, just be sure you know which one you're working with. So, I do want to be careful when looking at this. I want to always set up a right triangle, um, but I can measure kind of either from horizontal sometimes, like I had here. Uh, in this case, my x component was the f cosine theta. My y component was f sine theta. But if I measure my angle down from vertical, so I set my triangle up in a different way, uh, it's going to be the x component is sine theta, and the y component is cosine theta. So the thing that stays consistent is you always want to the cos or sorry sine theta is always going to be the opposite side, so opposite from this angle, and the adjacent side, the one that's touching this angle, is going to be the cosine of theta. All right, so that was 2D. When we jump into 3D, we're going to need to we're still going to have two forms, but they're going to be slightly different now. So in 3D, I need either the magnitude and two different directions, two angles, or I'm going to have uh, three components. So again, I've got a magnitude here. Uh, if I've got the x, y, and z axes, uh, I would do one angle kind of out here uh, from the board, and then another angle going up from there that gives me a direction. And the magnitude is just the same as it was before. <clears throat> or with three components, I would simply have x, y, and now z components. I'd add in one third component there. So again, we might need to convert back and forth between uh, these two forms in 3D. It's a little more complicated. Same principle, but a little more complicated in 3D. So <clears throat> to convert between forms in this case, we're going to use two right triangles, where the leg of one triangle uh, is going to be the hypotenuse of the second right triangle. So we're going to use the trig relationships to go back and forth between these two, uh, but we need to understand where these triangles are. So the two triangles, one triangle, and I've got it on both uh, representations here, is going to be kind of the, I first went out like this and then I went up. That first triangle is the space underneath where I went up. The second triangle, I'm drawing my diagram here, exists entirely in the XZ plane, so it's down on this flat surface here. Uh, so <clears throat> we can set it up in different ways, but we're always going to need two triangles. And we want to set it up in such a way that this angle, this 45 degree angle, this 30 degree angle that we're given in my, um, <clears throat> given with my magnitude uh, in two directions, uh, are describing part of that triangle for each one. So the 45 degree angle uh, is for triangle one, and the 30 degree angle in the back is for triangle two. So converting between forms, we're going to move from magnitude and direction into the component form. Uh, and we're going to start with triangle one. So I've got some angle phi for triangle one. Uh, and I've got the hypotenuse of this triangle is going to be my force vector, like it's shown here. Uh, and then the opposite side is going to be the y component. So this is going directly in the y direction. Um, it's dropping down straight to the xz plane. Uh, the more complicated part is this bottom component here. It's in the xz plane, but it's not an x or a y component. I'm going to label this fxz because it's in the xz plane. All right, so I can break this first force down into the y component. So f sine phi, the opposite side, gives me the y component. Uh, and then the xz comp component, if I do f times the cosine of phi, that gives me this length right here. All right, so I further want to break this one down. Uh, and I'm going to use triangle 2 to break that down into x and z components. So triangle 2, my hypotenuse is this fxz. And now you'll notice that <clears throat> the opposite side, this piece over here, this is going to be a right angle back here. It doesn't look like it, but that's because it's in 3D. So the opposite side is in the z direction. And this adjacent side, this is in the x direction. So if I break this component down, this is the hypotenuse, I can get x and z 
from that, that hypotenuse. So I'm going to take for fx, uh, that's the adjacent side, fx times the hypotenuse, fxz times cosine theta, gives me this length right here. Uh, and I can plug in, I know that fxz was this f cosine phi in the first place. Um, so I've got two angles that are required for fx. fz is the opposite side, so fxz, this hypotenuse, times the sine of the angle theta, uh, gives me the magnitude uh, fz. And I can plug in again, this f cosine phi was my value for fxz. So two triangles, and I just kind of break it down uh, as I go, the hypotenuse of my second triangle is one of the legs of my first triangle. All right, so a shortcut that I can use sometimes, um, that can get complicated, but it, it gets more complicated if I have a situation where I don't know the angles. So sometimes we'll have a force or velocity along some predetermined path, and that path is determined by and the body's geometry. The most common uh, application of this by far is if I've got tension in a cable. So say I have uh, some pole, it's six meters tall, the base of it is three meters and two meters from the point where this cable is anchored. The tension force is going to be acting along that cable, uh, but I'm not given any specific angles in this case, I'm just given dimensions for the pole and how far it is in the x and y direction from the base of the pole to where my cable is anchored. Um, so I could go ahead and use this geometry to try to figure out those angles, uh, but there's a simpler way to avoid all of that using ratios. So the 3D vector shortcut, if I have some of these dimensions, my tension force is going to be acting along the cable, and the ratio and the component of the tension force, uh, so in the x direction, say, over the total tension force, will be the same as the ratio of this length in the x direction over the overall length of this cable from the base up to the top of the pole. So in equation form, this looks like this. The x component of the tension force over the total tension is the length or the difference in the x direction over the total length of the cable. And that length, I'm just going to use the 3D version of the Pythagorean theorem. So the total length of the cable, if I've got the x component, the y component, and the z component, is lx squared plus ly squared plus lz squared. Take the square root of that whole thing, it gives me the overall length. I can do the same thing with the y and the z directions as well, and this will give me the x, y, and z components of my tension force, uh, assuming I know the overall magnitude of the tension, and these lx, ly, and lz dimensions for my given setup. All right, so with that, that's all I have for vectors. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again.